Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, one of the most popular XRP chart analysts on the entire planet has said that he's not going to sell one single XRP before the price hits $20 unless something unexpected happens, and I'll share with you exactly what he's talking about there, it has to do with exit strategies. Um, also, something that I've been warning out, a particular behavior that I know, based on data, wrecks people, has been reaffirmed based on a new survey of, uh, of crypto holders and purchasers, speculators, investors. Uh, so I want to talk about that too. You need to be aware of this. Just arm yourself with data. And look, I want to be clear. I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. And so you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I just think it's fun to talk about these topics as you know, like your everyday Joe Schmo type of perspective here. But I really firmly believe that arming yourself with knowledge is the best way to, uh, to, to accumulate wealth in the crypto asset class because like, like I said the, the biggest hurdle you're going to encounter in this is yourself just being aware of what behaviors humans engage in that wrecks them and what behaviors human engage in based on data historically uh, what 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 really truly allows them to acquire life-changing wealth just arming yourself with that and then not allowing emotions to dictate whether you buy or sell or hold if you can do that, you're well on your way. You've got a leg up against the competition if you can do that. Because honestly, your typical <clears throat> retail speculator is not capable of doing that. Now, as I record this, XRP is at $0.72. Cents. Bitcoin's at $38,868. Market cap for the asset class, $1.61 trillion. And Bitcoin dominance at just a hair over 45%. So at the time I'm recording this, we're mostly seeing a bit of green. And for frame of reference, uh, the time is currently... Uh, 2.45 a.m. Uh, that is uh, Thursday, August 5th, Central, Sta Central Standard Time, because I'm in the Midwest in the United States, and I record videos at weird times, because I do what I want, damn it. And uh, here's a tweet from chart analyst Credible Crypto. This is the analyst that I was talking about at the uh, during the intro. He wrote the following. A lot of people ask me if I plan on holding some of my crypto for five plus years, etc., Personally, I plan on selling everything at the peak of this bull cycle uh, within the next uh, one to two years and before the next major bear market. Uh, the, the, here's why. Once we see a major blow off top, I suspect prices are depressed again for another two to three years. In that time, I'll be investing in other uptrending asset classes with my profits from crypto. And so th this is the direction that I've been leaning for most of the last few years. Uh, for, for a lot of last few years, if you've really been listening to me for a long time, for, for the longest time, I used to say, um, I'm never going to sell all of my XRP. But the more I've uh, just thought about the reality of what might be happening in this market cycle, I suppose the truth is that anyone has their price. And so if, if I'm sufficiently enticed, I mean, there, there would be, as I think would be the case for just about anybody, a, a price where you're just like, okay, this is too good to pass up. So if something like that happens, um, then, then yes, I think that, that that's much more likely. But I've also been shifting the way I'm looking at it a little bit anyway, because the truth of the matter is that I really do believe the same thing that Credible Crypto is citing here, which is that a bubble is going to fully inflate and then it's going to pop. And ultimately, I think we're going to see... A price drops uh, just like we did last market cycle of over 80 percent for many coins over 90 percent some of them probably over 95 percent drops um, i'm anticipating this to happen historically this is what's occurred and i see humans behaving about the same as they have in the past so why wouldn't it and you don't know for sure but i'm just thinking in terms of what's probable yeah probably because the whole asset class is moving in tandem everything's getting treated the same and just seeing the way historically money has flowed throughout the crypto sphere uh, that that to me makes all the sense in the world and so I'm thinking what I'm going to do probably actually at this point is pretty well the same thing. Unload all of my crypto. And if I, I here's what I'm going to do. If, if I don't end up unloading all my crypto, to be honest, then it probably means that I made a mistake. And, and I not only did I miss the top, not that I'm trying to hit the top, but not only did I miss the opportunity to sell on the way to the top, let's say, it would also mean that uh, the bubble popped and went down. And I still didn't sell until it got so low where I'm like, okay, fine, I'll just wait for the next cycle. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Now, I do anticipate this is all going to be messy. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but... Uh, th that's part of my mental preparation for this is recognizing just like I was never able to buy the bottom of XRP despite the fact that I was regularly buying for, for years. Uh, I, I, just, just like I, I knew I couldn't and I didn't. Um, I'm also not going to be able to sell the top. 
And so what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm not going to beat myself up for not being able to sell the top. And so I'm even thinking, like, let's say I sell at a point where, like, let's say I literally unload all of my XRP and then it continues climbing. And let's say it goes up, uh, you know, two twofold from there or threefold or fourfold, whatever it ends up being. Um, I'm not going to cry and I'm not going to beat myself up because if I sell at that point, even if it goes way higher in the future, even during this market cycle, uh, if I sell, that's because it means I got what I needed out of this for me to be sufficiently happy. And what that means also when I sold it, I did not, there's no way I could have known that it would continue to proceed moving upwards uh, to that degree. And so what I did was I reduced my risk exposure and took profits. And it was substantially important for me and my personal position that I wasn't willing to take on that additional risk. And so some people will always be out there because they have this uh, less sophisticated approach of, yeah, but money went higher. I'm like, no, 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 no. Everybody's in different situations. Just because you would have done that or did do that uh, doesn't mean that that was right for me. I don't want, I don't have the same risk profile as you and I don't want the same risk pro profile as you. I'm doing what's right for me. And so that's what all that to say, even if, and I, I know I won't be able to sell the top, but even if I'm way off from the top, as long as I sell and it's enough for me, I'm good. And I will tell you um, when I begin selling XRP one day, and I've never sold a single XRP, but I fully intend to. And I'll let you know when I start. I'll let you know uh, when I'm fully out, assuming I do end up getting fully out of the market. And if I do understand that doesn't mean that I don't think um, XRP isn't long term viable. I'm more so recognizing these multi year cycles. And after the market tanks, I will be buying back in again, and I will buy a boatload of XRP at a discount after uh, accumulating massive profits. That that's my plan, and so I'm going to continue running the channel for sure. There's there's no there's like zero unless nobody wants to listen to me. We're fine. Then I'll go away. But outside of that, yeah, absolutely, I'm going to do it all again because I think there are fortunes to be made. I think I'm going to make a boatload of money this market cycle, uh, just selling on the way to the top, even though I'm not going to hit the top, and then I'm going to just rinse and repeat. Once the, once the market's down at least eighty percent, that's probably the point I'll start dollar cost averaging in again and I'll keep losing money and I'll be down for a number of years just like I was this past cycle and that's fine because that's when it's too scary for people to, to buy that's when I did it this past market cycle and uh, but that, that's also where the opportunity is <clears throat> so you have to have a long-term mindset and so I, I was down in my XRP purchases for most of the time I've been in this market and that's been fine that's been part of my strategy I just recognize data shows humans don't like to buy here so it's like oh well then I will because I know humans behave I have the data I'm armed with the knowledge and I'm just going to act accordingly so that's what I've done um, and so then somebody named XRP goat responded to that and wrote there is a strong uh, there is a strong belief that we are now entering the last leg of this cycle and it could be over within the next few months. Curious why you believe that this could drag out to be a six year cycle uh, compared to other four year cycles. And the reason he's saying that is because he did write again in that tweet at the top there that he plans on selling everything within the next one to two years, which admittedly caught me off guard a little bit too, but I think he may have written something that perhaps on hindsight he didn't quite mean because here's what Credible Crypto wrote in response. I am one of the ones who has been saying we have a final leg up to end this cycle. I think the current consolidation could last for three to four months easily, though. So six to 12 months is more where I would place an end to this bull run. So it looks like he doesn't really believe one, two years. Maybe he just wrote something quickly. I've done stuff like that on Twitter. It's just like, okay, here's what I think. And then whatever, you just shoot it out. So it seems more like uh, six to 12 months. 12 months still seems like a lot, but uh, it, within the realm of possibility, I mean, if I had to guess for fun, I mean, really six months from here, it, I mean, assuming history really re repeats extremely closely to the last cycle, you'd be looking at more like, what, actually four to six months, right? For the for the final leg to hit off. So, And I'm not predicting that. I don't pretend to know. I'm, I'm just saying if history were to repeat that closely compared to last cycle, it'd probably be closer to like four to six months. So uh, we really are on that final leg, up, like, or about to hit it anyway. And it's going to be very exciting. This is where the fun starts. And really, like as chill as I am, about uh, the price going down in crypto and i'm so good at managing emotions because like, i don't feel emo i'm like a robot i don't feel emotions when it goes down i i'm gonna be a bit nervous on the way up i think i'll admit that <laughs> i think i think i will be uh because i'm like okay what if something goes wrong what if for some reason it was access to temporarily to my uh my, like a, an important cryptocurrency exchange that i need access to or what happens sometimes with my 2fa or uh, well, if the cryptocurrency exchange goes down, I want to sell, although that's why I want to sell at multiple points on the way to the top. So hopefully that's not a problem, even if I encounter that. 
but just what if something unknown goes wrong um you know then you always worry even though i don't think something like this would happen like what if uh, you know there's a, a dishonest cryptocurrency exchange while i'm trying to offload get money into my checking account or whatever like the, not it shouldn't happen but still these are the types of things just being a human you just kind of feel and live through so i think to be honest with you i'm going to be more nervous as the prices get higher i mean it'll be exciting too but I'm not nervous at all. Like when price goes down here, what I, where the level where we are price wise now, I just it, that, that doesn't affect me. But yeah, on the way up, oh, and I'll I'll be willing to share that with you. I'll be transparent. I'm a human too here. But at least on the downside, because this is where people really have the pitfalls. It's when the price does go down, they're freaking out. Uh, I don't do that though, so that part's good. Now, in response to that tweet from Credible Crypto, that first one I read, uh, the money Lisa on Twitter wrote the following. What are your thoughts on holding 10% or so to let it ride through, especially knowing that selling the absolute top is nearly impossible? Incredible Crypto wrote the following. Uh, totally fine and understandable for those who want to do so, just not my cup of tea. And so, yeah, so the more time passes, the more I'm in line with that. I'm just thinking, what's the point? I, I, I do feel so strongly that the bubble's going to inflate and it is going to pop. So like, if, if that's my conviction, shouldn't I act accordingly? And I think the answer is yes, because also the other thing is, too, um, if, if I'm not ever sufficiently enticed to sell, then I will hold it. In that case, I would hold it through the bear market like th that would happen. But if I'm sufficiently enticed, um, and, and, you know, things run up, I'm just sitting here thinking, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, like in a, a stupid hypothetical situation where let's say like I, this isn't going to happen, I don't believe. But let's say XRP hit a peak of like two fifty or three dollars this market cycle. Well, in, in such a scenario, which is really unlike, I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, then I'd hold all of it. So it kind of, it does, admittedly, there's a lot of moving parts. It depends on what, what happens. Uh, the Money Lisa then wrote, so you're confident you can sell the top? Ooh, good question. Credible Crypto wrote, I'm confident I can sell close enough to the top to where it won't matter. Yeah, and so here's what I'm going to say. If, uh, if XRP runs up sufficiently and all sorts of chart analysts are confident that it's going to go way beyond where I really need it to go for me to be happy, I'm going to sell, even if I believe that they're likely to be correct, I'm going to sell way before that if it's enough money for me. Because again, like, there's it's, it's like risk reward here. Like... I, it's, it, I, everyone's different and I don't need that the same level of risk exposure that they need for them to get what they want. That's a, that's, that is absolutely something that needs to be considered here. So yeah, I might sell at a lower price than a lot of you, but what if I've got a bunch of XRP and it's a sufficient amount for me? Well, I, that, that's what's important because you don't know for sure. There's no way. Uh, and then there was this, somebody named Nana wrote the following to Credible Crypto. You've called for a $20 XRP. So to be clear, you're not selling a single XRP until it reaches $20, and then you'll unload your entire bag? Incredible Crypto responded. I plan on unloading between $20 to $30, unless I believe that we are not going to make it there for some other reason. The goal is to unload as close to the top as possible, or if I think the top has already been put in, whatever price that may be. And so this this is one of my considerations as well. Yeah, so for sure, if I hit a level that's sufficiently enticing to me, yeah, okay, fine, I'll just sell all of it. But if um, if we're not quite there, like maybe maybe we're kind of close and I'm selling on the way up here, well, this is why I'm going to be looking at, like and for, for me to sell, like I'm going to be looking at chart formations and what we have expected, what we might reasonably expect to happen based on previously what has occurred. But I'm not going to sell based on a specific timeline um, or necessarily specific price targets because I might be intent, um, enticed to sell most of it. But if, if the chart structure does show that we're likely going to go much higher, this is why I told you I'm not completely yet made up my mind, but there's a chance I could hold on to part of it. If I really think that it's going to go much, much higher, maybe I'll try and play that game. But um, if I do that, I'll still make sure that I have gotten uh, the substantial, like the strong majority of what I want to get out of the market if I even choose to, uh, to, to mess with that. So that's the way I'm looking at it right now. And so, like, admittedly, over the last few years, my thoughts on this have been evolving and will continue to. But that, that's where I'm at right now, anyway. Uh, and then here's a tweet from chart analyst Michael Vandepop. The market has seen one of the largest outflows from exchanges for Bitcoin recently. Long-term holders don't hold their Bitcoin on exchanges. Not your keys, not your coins. Given this data you can assume that those have been accumulating recently and are filled. And so this is what I've been saying. While well, people have been in fear for the last couple months or so, 
Uh, people that understand how market cycles work have just been, been purchasing the fear from the people that don't know what the hell they're doing and accumulating at a discount. That's exactly what they've been doing. That is what the on-chain blo uh, Bitcoin blockchain, their blockchain, that's what the metrics show. That's it. Um, and now to this. This is interesting from Cointelegraph. Panic selling is crypto investors' biggest mistake. New survey reveals. Oh, what's that? A panic selling? Yeah, exactly. It's This is exactly what I've been saying for a long, 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 long time. Or even if I didn't word it as the the, the biggest mistake. Um, I mean, it's it, it, if it's not, then it sure as hell is up there. It's, it's really because the way I word it, it's just, you know, emotionally buying and selling. That's how I typically word it. But yeah, panic selling is inside of that. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So a couple interesting things. I just want to read a couple parts of this article. Uh, based on one, so the curve, oh, I should mention this too. Uh, this is from a recent survey conducted by Crypto Vantage. Uh, named a, uh, they named this a coin storage security, a closer look at crypto storage and passwords. Now, based on 1,021 United States-based cryptocurrency owners' responses, most choose to store their digital investments on crypto exchanges, with Coinbase sitting in first at 34.7%. Uh, Waltz from Binance and Robinhood also hold a large user base for storing crypto at approximately 25% and 26% respectively. And so there you go. Now, this is, this is very interesting to me. I know they're not specifically citing XRP, but I have long said that I don't think that most um, most people that own XRP have chosen to self custody their their XRP. I really don't think that's the case. Um, and, and so, like, I look at the like uh, um, metrics for XRP specifically, how many accounts have, have been created, and I don't know the exact number, but I, it's probably sitting around three point two million XRP accounts have been created at this point. And so, I've long said like. I don't, I don't think that's all that there is. I think that there's way, way, way more than that. So even if, if he was just, because I understand if you say the word most, that, mis, that just means over 50%. So even if you just double that 3.2 million number, that puts 6.4 million humans on the planet having ever created an, an XRP account. Although admittedly also some could have created two, but you get, you, we're dealing with the data we have. Yes, okay. close enough. But it's probably more than that. I, I think like the strong majority, if I had to guess, I'd be willing to bet the strong majority are just leaving their crypto on exchanges. So that's why I'm saying like you got I, I, the, the XRP community and XRP holders, like it's much bigger than people give it credit for. I wouldn't be surprised if it's more like instead of 3.2 million, if it's over 10 million or over 20 million people that have ever held XRP at any point in time since its inception. I, 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 that would make more sense to me, frankly. Um, so there's that. And also, I think it's a terrible idea to leave crypto on exchanges for any long period of time. Just my humble opinion. Uh, but also, there was this. Um, where was I? Maybe it was a little... Uh, sorry, I was looking for a specific part of this. I thought it was right down here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, uh, here we go. The surveyed investors showed panic selling as one of the biggest mistakes, followed by investing everything in one type of coin. And so the people that said that panic selling is the biggest mistake, that was 38.2%. And so what do I keep saying all data indicates towards? The people that panic sell, they're selling to people that uh, are a bit more savvy, understand this is how humans behave and are able to control their emotions. The people that are selling here are people that are unable to control their emotions. And everybody's done it, but like learn from it, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, and, and so that to me, that's, that's just fascinating. Just, just to see another metric here, just it just proves that it's just, a, well, it's another piece proving the point that I've been making for the longest damn time, which is why I keep saying it. Like, I really believe that anybody has the ability, just, to, well, not literally, uh, most people I think can have the ability to accumulate wealth, but those that are, are never capable of controlling their emotions are doomed to, to failure. Absolutely. They will never make it. And you see this, people behave the same with the stock market too. And it's just unfortunate because if you, if you can't weather the storm, you are in trouble. And with crypto, it's it's extra risky for these people because uh, this is the most volatile asset class on the planet. Uh, there isn't even a close second. So that's where we're sitting here. So you guys let me know what you think before. I thought these were interesting topics to talk about. That I would love to have you guys continue the conversation below and tell me what your perspectives are on all this as far as exit strategy and everything else. But I'll stop here. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time. To the moon, Mambo.